If you're a PNG tuber and you've ever wished that you could use VTube Studio and all of its special features, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. Before we get started, you're going to need a few things. First of all, you will need an art program that supports PSD files. You're also going to need Live2D Cubism, VTube Studio, and PNG tuber art. I'll be showing you how to get each of those three softwares, but in terms of PNG tuber art, I also did make an entire pick crew for you to be able to use for your PNG tuber. Now there are other pick crews available. In terms of recommendations, not every artist is okay with edits, such as recolors, or what we're going to be doing, which is going to be actually deforming the image in Live 2D. All I can recommend is you make your own art or you use my pick crew because I can guarantee I don't give a f if you put it in Live 2D and make it bounce, but that's just me personally. I can't say the same for every artist on pick crew, so just make sure you research or ask the artist. Oh, and by the way, I do have a video on making that pick crew, so if you're curious about the process, I will link that in the description as well. So step one is to make a pick crew. I'm just gonna do this with y'all in case you've never made a pick crew before. Basically, you can just go through and customize it. So once your pick crew is done and ready to go, the last thing to do is go into the background section and remove the background so that this will have a transparent background. Then you can hit done and it will generate the PNG for you. And you can go ahead and hit download image. But we're not stopping there because we also need the version of it with our mouth open. We're going to hit create a new one and we're just going to move over to the mouth section and this will be, <laughs> I just realized the eyebrows are black. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, I'm gonna have black eyebrows, but you'll have to pick your mouth open option for speaking. I'm probably just gonna do this one and then hit done and download this one too. Next, we're gonna have to download and install Fire Alpaca. You can do this in GIMP, you can do this in any program that has PSD support, but Fire Alpaca is my free art software of choice, so I'm gonna be using Fire Alpaca in this video. Just click on the Fire Alpaca website, front page, yelling at you to download it. I'm just gonna download the Windows option, and then we can double click to install. You'll get a pop up, hit run, and then you will get to the Fire Alpaca installation process. Hit install here, and it should install for you. I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna do that. Similarly, for like 2D, I'll just load up the home page and hit the download trial version. You have to check this consent box before you can download and then you can hit the download latest release. It'll download it to a folder and once you've got it downloaded, you can do the same thing that we just did for Fire Alpaca. Just double click it and it'll pull up the installation process. I'm not gonna do that because once again, I have it installed. And lastly, VTube Studio is going to be on Steam. If you do not have the money to buy this, uh, no worries, it is free. You will just have a little bit of a watermark, which you can technically crop out with OBS. So hit the free download and it'll ask you if you wanna add it to your library and you can go ahead and add it. Now that we have our pick crew made and all of our software is installed, let's go ahead and open Fire Alpaca. You will get this annoying prompt, just hit okay. Ignore. And we're just going to take our downloaded pick crew, our little buddy. We're gonna drag and drop and it's gonna load it in. And we're going to do the same thing for the mouth open option as well, drag and drop. You can tell up here, these are going to be in separate files for the time being. We're going to merge them though here in a second. I'm going to press Control A, Control C. Then I'm going to go to the other document and press Control V and that will paste our mouth open PNG as a new layer within this first document. Now I can go ahead and close this other one, right click and close. The only last thing to note is that this is a 600 by 600 pixel canvas. We can go to edit image size and upscale this to 1024 or 2048 pixels if you really wanna do that. I'm just gonna leave this as 600. Now we're gonna save the document, so just go to file, save as, and we're going to change the file format to PSD, and I'm going to name this Pick Crew Model and hit save. Now we're good to go. We can go ahead and close out Fire Alpaca. So now we can go ahead and open up Live 2D Cubism. If you've downloaded and installed it and open it for the first time, you will get this little pop-up asking you what you want to do about your serial code. I have personally deactivated my own serial code for the time being so that we can just go ahead and use the pro version free trial together. Go ahead and hit start pro version free trial. If you try to do the free version, you can't save your documents. So make sure that you're doing this pro version free trial. The trial period will be starting now. So go ahead and hit yes. It gives you a warning about your trial period and then you can go ahead and hit okay. You'll always be able to tell how much time is left. It'll tell you up here in the top left. I don't think it's gonna take you 42 days to do this little project though, baby, you got this. <laughs> 
Now we're actually gonna start rigging. So we're going to grab the PSD and we're gonna drag and just drop it right into the program and it will load in the file. Now we can start working with the actual file. I've added an input tracker in the left side so that you can monitor the button presses if you're bad with auditory processing and need a visual indicator. But let's go ahead and start if you're new to Live GD. Don't worry, bro. <laughs> Trust me, we don't need all of these parameters. These are normal tracking parameters for a full model like the one that I'm using right now. We don't need these, so let's left click on this first one here, scroll to the bottom, hold shift and left click this bottom one down here. Then we can right click and we can go ahead and hit delete. It'll prompt you a whether or not you're sure. And yes, we are sure. And it'll go ahead and delete everything. So now we're going to add back the parameters that we need. To do that, we are going to use this little plus button here. Gonna click that. We're going to add our voice volume. We can just name this voice volume and make the ID param voice volume with no spaces. This is going to be from zero to one with a default of one and hit OK. We're just going to add one more parameter. So we're going to hit the plus sign again. We're going to name this one squash stretch. <laughs> and this is actually going to go from negative one to one with a default of zero. And that's all we're gonna need. We can start rigging. The first step is we need to make mesh for these, but make sure that you select one of them, hold shift or control and select the other one so that we're selecting them both at the same time. And then we're going to come up here to this top button here. We're going to select this auto mesh button and it will come up with this automatic mesh generator. We're going to set this to standard and it will generate a mesh around both of these objects. Now the mouth open layer should be the top one. If it's not, then you can go ahead and click and drag it. Make sure that you click and drag it in the parts menu, not the deformer menu. The deformer menu will not let you reorganize. As you can see, I cannot reorganize this. You have to do it over here on this side. So I'm going to just grab this layer too, and I'm gonna pop it underneath. So with the top mouth closed layer selected, we are going to come over here to our voice volume parameter. Make sure that this voice volume parameter is selected and we're going to hit this two keyforms button here to add two keyforms. So in this situation, voice volume at zero is obviously you're not speaking and voice volume at one on this end is going to be you are speaking. There is volume happening. <laughs> Your voice is being used. We want to be able to see the mouth open PNG when we're at one and see the mouth closed PNG when we're at zero. Obviously we can already see the mouth closed parameter when we're at zero. So we're just going to edit this at the one point. So make sure you either right click or drag over to get to this side. So we're set at positive one. And now we're going to make sure that we have our mouth closed layer selected. We're going to turn the opacity down in this inspector section. We're going to pull it down to zero. And as you can see, it changes so that you can no longer see the mouth closed. Now what happens when we slide it back is it will revert back. So we already have a functional mouth closed, mouth open. A little thing you can add into to have your model actually darken when not in use. While we are set to zero, we can make sure that we have our mouth closed PNG selected. We can actually select this multiply color option again over here with this inspector section. We can click this and we can actually just darken so that at point zero, the model will be dark with a closed mouth and at point one, it will brighten up with the mouth open. By the way, if at any point you get sick of looking at this mesh <laughs> you can go up here to this show menu and hit hide selected state and it will hide all of your deformers and mesh so you don't have to look at this. I have this on a hotkey for myself on H. So now that we have our basic volume toggle on, we can go ahead and make our first deformer. So we're going to select again one of the layers, hold shift and select the other layer. And we are going to select this button up here. This is the warp deformer button. I'm gonna hit that and it will give us a pop-up asking us uh, what settings we want for our warp deformer. The default settings are fine. We can leave that as is. And I'm just going to name this squash stretch. That's all we really need. Sorry, I have this hidden, so I'm gonna hit H. Again, hotkey that I've created for myself. So now we can see the warp deformer looks like this. Okay, so what we're going to do is with our squash stretch deformer selected, we are going to select our squash stretch parameter and we're going to use the three 
keyform button to add three keyforms. At zero, nothing is happening. We're not squashed or stretched. So let's move to positive one. This is going to be our stretch. So I'm going to, again, with the warp deformer selected, hold alt and left click and drag inwards to make yourself compressed. <laughs> Now you can already see the difference if you slide this back and forth, we're being compressed, but we're not actually being stretched. So let's hold left click and pull our model up to stretch ourselves out. You can see down here, it's lifted a little bit from the bottom. So I'm also going to left click and hold shift so that it stays in place and we move straight vertically and I'm going to drag downwards so that it will stay kind of where it was beforehand. So this is the result now. We have a nice stretch, boing. <laughs> We're gonna do the same on the other side now. So let's go to the negative one keyform. We're going to hold alt, left click, and instead of going inwards, we're gonna pull outwards. If your model goes past the bounds of the canvas, that's fine, by the way. And we're going to hold left click and drag down so we're nice and squished. It's the inverse of what happened before, where a lot of the body has moved past the bounds. I don't think this really matters, but just for the sake of my mental health, <laughs> I'm gonna pull it up. <laughs> and now I'm going to toggle off visibility so you can just see this a little bit better. This is the end result. Boing, boing, boing. Looks good to me. So the next part of the process is to add the physics. So we're going to go up here to the modeling menu and we're going to hit physics settings. This menu is really scary. I know it'll be okay, <laughs> trust me. So we're going to go ahead and hit add right here. We're going to add a new physics group. I'm just gonna name this squash stretch again. You can leave the input preset as is and for the physics model preset, we're going to set this to bust small. You should have bust small available. I think it comes with live 2D. If you don't have it, it's okay. You can go ahead and copy my settings and hit okay. So now we have this little pendulum here that's been activated. If you don't have like that input for whatever reason, you can just go ahead and hit add and it will go ahead and add in a pendulum for you. We're going to hit an add button, but this time we're gonna hit not this top add button we're gonna hit this add button here where the input section is we're going to hit add and we're going to select voice volume that's going to be our input and hit okay we're going to swap over to the output settings tab now hit that and we are going to add an output setting and set this to squash stretch now it doesn't work just yet we have to go back to our input settings and we're going to make this 100 percent effective and you'll see it start to move already basically what we've done is we've said that any time that this input happens aka voice volume which means that any time that the volume is raised above zero it's going to give an output and the output is sent into the squash and stretch so it's basically saying anytime there's vocal information boing <laughs> and you will have to set this up within VTube Studio too, but for the time being, looks pretty okay. We're bouncing. However, when we move this back and forth, we're bouncing like way too much. The pendulum is going crazy. So I'm just going to adjust some settings here and uh, you can change this to your liking, but you're welcome to copy my settings. The problem is that the pendulum is going absolutely batch insane right now. So we're going to need to decrease the output. If you look, the output maximum is 300 when realistically our output maximum should be like 100 because we want 100% of the maximum to occur when we are speaking at max volume. So I'm going to hit this decrease output button and hit yes down here and it should pull it down to the defaulted 100 so that when you speak really fast and have that crazy output like this, it doesn't bounce too much. Looks pretty good to me. So now we can go ahead and hit the X button and it will save our physics settings. And now I'm going to control S to save. And now we are ready to export, but first we have to make our texture atlas. Hit control T and it will ask you to make a new texture atlas. You can leave this as default. 1024 by 1024 should be enough because our PNG tuber is only 600 by 600 pixels. So I'm going to hit okay. And it should auto place it. If it doesn't auto place it here, then you'll have a list here. And basically you can just select right click and you'll be able to place selected objects onto texture atlas. Obviously mine are already there so I have nothing to place. If yours weren't automatically placed that's how you would add them in. Wherever they're placed should be fine. Most of the time the automatic is okay. Just make sure that they're not overlapping like this. You don't want them to be on top of each other and then go ahead and hit okay and it will generate the texture atlas for you. 
And now we are ready to export. So let's go to file, export for runtime, export as Mach 3 file. Just copy these settings if your settings aren't <laughs> set to this. This should be default though, so you're probably good. <laughs> and hit okay. And I'm gonna <laughs> pick crew model. The file name is going to be the actual name of the model itself. So I'm just gonna leave this one as the real one for YouTube so I know which one it is, but you can pick whichever directory you want it to be saved to and then hit save and it will export your model. When it's done, it should give you a pop-up and open up the folder for you to show you where it is. So now we can hit save and close out live 2D. And now the next part is we are going to add our pick crew model into our VTube studio folder. So to do that, we are going to make sure that we have the entire model folder selected. And we are going to open up our Live 2D Models folder from VTube Studio. Just put it in Live 2D Models. I'm going to click and I'm going to copy to Live 2D Models. And now I have my new pick crew model saved into my Live 2D Models folder for VTube Studio. Now I can close this out and let's open up VTube Studio. We can hit this model icon here. I'm gonna search YouTube because I know I named the model for YouTube and I'm going to click the model to pull it up. Ignore this auto setup. We don't need to do auto setup because this is not a standard model so it's not really gonna help us anyway. So you can go ahead and hit cancel and you should be able to see your little guy within VTube Studio. To move and drag it around, it's hold left click to drag. Zoom in and out is with the scroll Wheel, and if you hold control and use your scroll wheel, you can rotate yourself. Now, before we can start this, we do have to make sure that our mic input is working. So let's go to this cog menu. And on this first sub menu, we're going to scroll all the way down until we see this microphone settings option. So my mic is already turned on, so you can see it working. But if your mic is not set up, you will click this mic option and select which microphone input you'll want to be using. In my case, it's Wavelink. And then we're going to make sure that this mic option is toggled on. So now you should be able to see your mic input. It's tracking your voice frequency and volume down here. And now we can go into the actual parameter setup. So to do that, you will click on this top sub menu up here and this will open up your parameter configuration. We can scroll down to the bottom. We're going to hit the plus sign to add a new parameter. We're going to name this volume. The input is going to be voice volume and the output is going to be, to no one's surprise, voice volume. And you can see it's already working, although it does look a little bit up. <laughs> It's too violent, right? So let's make this a little bit less obnoxious. First thing that we wanna do is make sure that the bounce happens immediately when you start making noise and so that it doesn't change in between. We don't want it to actually register the keyform in between the on and off point. So I'm going to set the maximum input value to 0.01. And that means that it will set itself to max as soon as I start talking. And that will prevent it from bouncing up and down while I'm talking consistently because as long as my voice is above 0.1 volume, it will be at the noise level maximum. Now you also can toggle the smoothing down. We don't need to have the smoothing on. If it seems to be bouncing too chaotically, you can also scroll up here and pull down your physics strength and it will make it less violent. So maybe like something more like 30 will prevent it from being annoying looking. <laughs> And that's it. Now you have a VTube Studio model that is actually just a PNG tuber that we force smashed <laughs> into VTube Studio. The plus side is you can use all of VTube Studio's features. So you can use the special effects. You also have access to the multi-person stream. Your friends can have you in their VTube Studio input and pin your PNG tuber to their model and stuff like that. I know this is a pretty unorthodox thing to do, but it's an option. <laughs> If you've successfully done it, I'm proud of you for using Live 2D for the first time, probably. I hope that you get some good use out of it and good luck. Happy PNG tubing. Bye.